It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. After narrowly winning the UK elections on June 8th, the Conservative Party has been struggling to form a government. Finally, Theresa May, the UK Prime Minister, has secured a majority in Parliament with the 10 MPs from the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland. The deal with the DUP will mean that the Northern Irish MPs will support the Prime Minister's proposed budget and legislation in exchange for one billion pounds sterling for infrastructure spending in Northern Ireland. The reaction against the deal has come from across the political spectrum with many former and current senior politicians claiming this deal may violate the Good Friday Agreement that secured the end to the armed conflict in Northern Ireland. Joining us today to discuss the implications of the deal with the DUP is Adam Ramsey. Adam is a UK editor of Open Democracy. He's based in Edinburgh and has written extensively about Scottish, Northern Irish and UK politics. Adam, good to have you with us again. Thank you for having me. Okay, Adam, let's begin with explaining what's in the deal. What is in it for the Theresa May government and the Conservatives and what is in it for the DUP in Northern Ireland? So for Theresa May, she gets 10 more votes for what's called votes of confidence and votes of supply, so budget. So it's known as a confidence and supply deal. What that means is she can't push through every piece of legislation she might like, but she will, when it comes down to it on votes of, you know, paramount importance, i.e. ones that could bring down the government, she'll have the MPs there to line up behind her, assuming her own Conservatives don't rebel. Um, what the Democratic Unionist Party got in exchange for this was a huge amount of money, um, a billion pounds for a you know, relatively small part of the UK. And I think it's important to say two things about that. The first is that more money for Northern Ireland is in itself a good thing. Austerity has been a failure in Britain. Northern Ireland is one of the poorest parts of Northern Europe. And investing more money in Northern Ireland is in itself good. And lots of people in the rest of Britain, including my friends on the left, I think have been very wrong to condemn money going somewhere that it's needed. Um, but on the other hand, we need to look very carefully at two things. Firstly, the issue that you raised about how this potentially violates the Good Friday Agreement and is a massive risk to the peace process in Northern Ireland. And also look at the detail of how the money is actually being spent, because it's worth remembering that Northern Ireland is still, as it always has been, an astonishingly divided community. Um, All right, so let's, let's unpack this one at a time. How does it compromise the Good Friday Agreement? Okay, so the Good Friday Agreement, which was signed in 1997 and has kind of, you know, four main partners to it. It's got the UK government, the Irish government, the EU and America. So Bill Clinton was absolutely key to the process. And it requires that the British government and the Irish government and the Americans are neutral in the conflict between the Catholic and the Protestant communities in Northern Ireland. So remember, the Catholic community, on the whole, is seen as wanting to, in the long term, uh, join with the Republic of Ireland and become part of the Republic of Ireland. And the Protestant community, known as the Unionist or the Loyalist community, wants to remain part of the UK. And it was that context, you had a very long-running civil war in Northern Ireland, which ends in 1997, and it requires the British government, the treaty, the Good Friday Agreement treaty, requires the British government to be neutral within that. And so if you give one side, the DUP represent the unionist, the Protestant side of that deal, uh, particular power of the British government, then obviously that British government is no longer in any way neutral. In fact, the Tories have openly said now that they are, you know, they're not neutral on the question of this issue, which is in itself a worry. The other huge problem, and it's important not to forget this, is that already the process of Brexit, and in fact a whole set of other things happening in Northern Ireland, were jeopardising this deal as it stood. So already in a context where leaving the EU might leave a hard border between the North of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland for the first time really ever, um, because we've never had a situation before where one's in the EU and the other's out of the EU, Ireland joined the EU at the same time as the UK. Um, so we see the, already the risk of a hard border between them already the institutions of the EU, which are a key part of the Good Friday Agreement, you know, we'll see Northern Ireland leaving those, despite the fact Northern Ireland voted to remain in the EU. And then you add in this element, and you have a real risk, a real problem. 
All right. Now, so uh, then we have Michael Fallon, who is the Secretary of Defense, defending the deal as necessary for the prosperity of Northern Ireland and the United Kin Kingdom. Um, what is wrong with that uh, in terms of the Nor Northern Irish getting some extra money for critical public investment and infrastructure support? Well, in itself, there's nothing wrong with it. But of course, the, the kind of problem with the analysis of the Tories is that she, lots of parts of the UK need more investment. The government has been forcing through austerity for you know seven years now. That's had brutal impact absolutely on Northern Ireland, but also on other very poor parts of the UK, such as the northeast of England, the west of Wales, the Welsh Valleys, and lots of other places too. So I think people who've been criticising the deal for saying you know saying that Northern Ireland shouldn't get money are wrong. But of course, it's not just Northern Ireland needs money, and the Tories at the same time as forcing you know, as giving this money to Northern Ireland, have been you know, not giving the same money to other places that need it. But then the other problem is that you've got to look very carefully at where the money is going in particular, because Northern Ireland geographically is very divided. There's still literally, there's walls in between the Catholic communities and the Protestant communities. You know, like the wall that Trump is threatening to build is the border with Mexico. Northern Ireland is divided by these, what they call peace walls, but, you know, basically to stop people killing each other. And so the question is, which communities is this money going into? And the, the kind of initial analysis which shows where the investment is going shows that it's largely going, for example, east of the River Ban, which is mostly where majority Protestant communities live, rather than west of the River Ban, where, you know, majority Catholic communities tend to live. And I expect we'll see more and more, you know, analysis showing that the money's been steered by the DUP towards what they'd see as their communities, which is a huge problem. And Part of the context of this is absolutely vital and a bit complicated is that one of the things the Good Friday Agreement did was set up a national government for Northern Ireland which required both communities, Catholic and Protestant, to have representation in the government of Northern Ireland, which would make sure that money was roughly doled out fairly between the two sides. But that government collapsed earlier this year in the context of a massive corruption scandal with the DUP. And so the you know, Sinn Féin, the uh, biggest Catholic party, uh, refusing to go into government with the DUP, which means that there isn't currently a Northern Irish government. And so all of this infrastructure spending, rather than going through the normal process and making sure it's allocated fairly, has just been chosen basically by the DUP in a list of demands to the Conservative Party. And that means one half of the population in Northern Ireland, the Protestant Unionist part, getting to decide where this amount of money goes, rather than the normal process, which is about making sure that both halves of the community are fairly represented. So then, Adam, despite recent claims by the press that Theresa May had decided to end austerity uh, in the UK, and uh, they are also criticizing her for flipping and flopping on the issue, but Mike and Michael Fallon has come out and, of course, claimed that austerity is not over. So what kind of reaction is there for um, what's going on in terms of, yes, austerity for UK and maybe more lenient policies in terms of this money being handed over to Northern Ireland. Um, what is the reaction to all of this? So we'll have to wait and see what it says in the next UK budget, which happens once a year, and that won't be for a while. But the reaction from a lot of people, you know, is, so for example, uh, the, the Labour Party, along with other opposition parties, proposed an amendment to what's called the Queen's Speech, where the government laid out its programme. Um, where they said that the, uh, there should be a raise in the wages of public sector workers who had a pay freeze for a very long time. So people like firefighters and nurses and so on. Um, and the Conservatives voted that down. And, and in fact, throughout the election campaign we had recently, you know, they were very clear, they kept using this line, there's no magic money tree. In other words, we can't just we can't find funds to pay public sector workers the uh, money they deserve. And, uh, you know, public sector workers here in the UK have had a pay freeze, which in real terms means a big pay cut for a long time now. Um, and of course, you know, refusing to raise tax on the wealthy, etc., in order to raise that money. And so there's a lot of anger at the sense that the Tories gave all this money to Northern Ireland in order to secure their majority, but then haven't been willing to pay public sector workers more. Now, my argument would be that austerity was always a myth and they can afford both to give proper infrastructure money to Northern Ireland because failure to invest in infrastructure always makes the country poorer and also afford to pay public sector workers a decent wage. The UK, of course, is one of the most unequal countries in the world. We could easily tax the wealthy more and also 
if you don't invest properly in public services, that only makes your country poorer in the long run. Failure to invest in health and education is what makes a country poor. All right, Adam, uh, we'll be watching uh, this deal as it goes through and hope to have you back for more comment. Thank you for that update. Nice to chat. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.